All right, here's it, that day forever. I've just been sanding and flattening down the paint. So, I don't know how well you can see this, you know. It's very smooth now. Um, so that's not how we're going with that. And then this is where it's been sanded, but it hasn't been flattened. I sanded it with 500. Yeah, just to flatten the paint, basically. Where is I'm going to play with this little line. Hopefully that's going to come out. Um, but yeah, we're basically trying to get the shine. Well, we'll get the shine back once we polish it. But this is flattened back. You can just, I don't know if you can see that there. You can see it's not smooth. You see? And that's what I'm doing now is getting it glass flat like I've done here. Uh, you see, pick up on it there, so I've got a crack on from here. I've done pretty much all of that now. And the process, let's see if I can uh, make this. Oh, right, Matt I'm digging in the bushes again. Right. Some safety water. I've got the trusty torch. Can't get them all, some, I don't know why, some are a little deeper than others. But in general, we're getting there. Of course, I stood on this and broke it. What are you doing, dog? Hey, chewing up the bushes. Yeah, so I went doing this, even though I'm using my hand, I'm not putting my fingers and drawing lines. Yeah, you keep your fingers sideways. So you go in a constant push. If you go like that, you'll put tram lines basically into it. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to make it out I'm a professional at this, hence why I'm doing it in my back alleyway. But I've painted a few motorbikes over the years. 
anyone who's seen that video I'll put on YouTube and on the channel, you see the motorbikes I've built, a couple of motorbikes I've done, and I'm self-taught on the painting, as far as the video goes. The wife's come out to talk to me. But anyway, I'll cut that short, as you can see, right, that's basically what I'm doing on the flat inside of it, and then I'll, uh, I'll bring you back when we come to polishing. And then what I'm doing with the torch is I'm going around and you can let's see, see a couple of areas. Don't know if you'll spot them or oh, you'll be able to see them. I can see them. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you pick up on bits that haven't been flattered yet. It should look like glass when it's wet um, and pretty much give you the shine. And, uh, which as I've got the torch in my hand to see if it lights up the blue. I don't know. You see the blue, you can make it a light tinge of it. I think mean, when the sun's on it, it'll be a lot better. But yeah, I'll put some blue pearl on it. It's only a test, it's going to get sanded back and done properly. Because I didn't flat it off before putting the lacquer on, so the lacquer's never going to stick, it'll just peel off. So that'll all get sanded back. It was just a quick test while I had a little bit in the gun. Actually, that bit came up quite nice there. Yeah. So, Charlie, that's going underwater most of the time. It'll be a trailer queen at this rate. Right, I'll end that one there and join it on to another one once I start polishing. Still got so still doing the other side as well, got to sand all that down. But I basically went over it with that thing. And it's got a 500 on it lightly, not too far with that. And then uh, and then this is 1200 wet and dry. And that should, because uh, you can see there how orange peel it is. And then, uh, like I say, that all basically comes out once you get the 12 months on it. Some of you have probably done this before and know all about it, and then other people, this might be the first time you've seen someone doing something like this, who knows? I don't know. It all depends on the audience. So, and then as you can see, straight away, it don't take long. It flats down really nice. Anyway, I'll leave you there, I'll see you when I polish it. Okay, right, we've done the flatting down. <clears throat> That's it all flat. Hence, no shine. Uh, I think we can see it better from down here. And now I've got my old trusty polish mop. That's a new, super, like, very soft foam. Very soft. Um, to give a real clear finish. <laughs> Proper buff it up. So. Just added, you can see, very light amount, not a lot of polish on there at all. Um, you can end up flinging everywhere like I did before. Hopefully, this will work because this lead ain't long and my battery's nearly flat. Anyway, a little bit wet. I always wash it out, try and get rid of all the old polish before we're using it.
obviously being that it's nice and soft foam it follows the contours so I don't get burn patches unplug ya and let's see how close we are as you can see nowhere near just yet they needed a bit more polish I'll have another crack at that but yeah, you get the gist of it, and then now that's what I've got to do for all this side, and then the same process on the other side, and that's how you get, you know, that sort of a finish. Dirty and dusty, but you know, that's how you get that. So there's a couple of videos for the day. Hmm. And then what I'll probably do is wash it all off. The old, uh, I've got some turtle wax. Great stuff, can't have thought it. Um, and then I might even run the buffer just quickly over the whole bottom with all the white just to uh, make it as slippery as possible in the water. It's only eight and a ten horsepower motor, so it needs all the help it can get. <laughs> anyway, there you go, guys. Video stopped. All right, here we go, guys. That's just dust. Still dusty and he's washing off. But, in fact, you can see everything. Yeah, that shows you how near a finish it is. A little bit more to do around this edge, it's just a little bit dull there. So we'll polish that and <laughs> dickhead. Sanded it back, just got a bit too aggressive on that corner there. But that was where the join was, so I was flattening the join out. But I we'll have to do the old touch up paint bit. So, uh, let's get in there with that. But this is done now, I'm happy with how that's come out really. Well, I think you got the idea, haven't you? It's no different to that over there now. So yeah, very happy with how that's come out. I can see a few areas. I don't know if you're gonna pick that up. Let's see. Along here, it's still just a little bit hazy, just along this stretch. Oh, it's come out, yeah, it's still on there, it's a little bit haze. And uh, if that really was flattening back a bit more, if that was a bit I missed, I think you can pick that up. How can you see it? it? Looks dusty, it's not, it's just. I'll try and polish it. What the fuck? Hey guys, I live near Heathrow Airport. Why the hell have we got seagulls, for fuck's sake? Seagulls! Bastards. They're the ones that shit on your motor. It's not just a shit, it's like a fucking elephant sized turd landing on it. Buggers all your paint up. Uh, it don't matter, it's a boot. So, that's all that done. Uh, I don't think you're going to see any shine in the white. And yeah. Too dull today to see the white. But it's just, the white's getting there, it wants a bit more yet. Wants a bit more. The trouble is, it has got lacquer over the top of it, and I probably should have polished it, flattened it, then lacquered it. And I didn't. I just gave it a very light Scotch Bright. And now I can't get the shine back as well as I'd like, but that would be half of that's going to be underwater. The front of me shoe will only be visible. That's a private joke. Will it? Will it? Will it? I think it is. Anyway, guys, well happy. Once you get the other side looking like that, now I can um, finally get it on its trailer. And I've got a bit more welding. I've got to sort out the um, quite a winch and I'll cut off what was on there because, like I say, this was for a different boat. So we grind all that back. I painted it anyway just to stop it getting any rustier, but grind it back, weld the poles back on, and get a better fit in for the tip because it was designed for a V-boat and it, 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 the top of it, and I've had to cut it off because it was just digging into the gel coat. Uh, that roller still needs raising, but the guy who built this trailer done a great job and welded the pins in. I can't even take the kill rollers and clean them up, grease them up, or bugger all. So I think I'm going to drill them out, get myself some pins, um, pins or rods or whatever, make my own up, and I'll drill holes in them and put split pins on the end, so they're easily removable after every run. Take them out, slap my grease, 
because I want these to roll. I really do. When I tried roll it rolling, I had it on upside down on the boat when I was fixing the um, the bunks, and I couldn't even push the trailer along the top of the boat. It just left black streak marks from the rubber. So they definitely need to come off and uh, sort it out. So that one I'll just probably take the pin out and grind out a bit here and weld the pin ooh, weld the pin on the top. And then that should work out in about the right spot. It only rests on that one when it's all the way on. That one and the one back there take the main. So, yeah, I think you can see it better with that one. Weld with the pin in place. So you can't take them off. I did squirt some WD and there's a bit of play in that. I don't know. I'm no expert. Someone can tell me. Is that fucked? Or is that buggered? Sorry. Do I need new ones? Joe and Louis, they're like 20 quid each. I mean, that sounds cheap, but it just adds on to the price of the boat. I mean, I think ideally you want four of them. Then they're 80 quid. And I'm being a tight arse with this boat. I'm trying to do the whole thing for under 1200 quid. Um, the trailer, I paid 150 quid for the trailer. The boat was 370 quid on eBay due to a last second bid. Just about got that. And um, an engine, my good neighbour who's down here has got a, uh, I believe it's a Honda. I can't remember now, it was a while since I asked him. Um, Honda 9.9. .9. And that's all I need for the river. Proxy speed limits. So that will stop me getting caught nick for speeding anyway. Yeah, I could throw a faulty on it, but I would get nick for speeding. I know I would. Because um, until you get down past Putney, which is probably two and a half hours from where I'm going to be putting this boat in the water. Two and a half hour stretch just to get past Putney to go and open it up. And I've I got a feeling there's a limit now further up a bit. It used to be you got past Putney Bridge and you put your foot down. Which we did in a Shakespeare 17 back in the day. <laughs> Alright, that's it. I've enjoyed this so far. Don't worry, I'll, I'll do some more updates on like, what's going on inside. Um, that's going to be a bit different. In grade two, what I want to do is have like a sun deck at the front. So where the front step is, <clears throat> a sheet of ply on there. And I'm probably going to come, I might just sort of put a piece of ply on that step, and on this step here, and then just come straight out, match the height, sheet of ply on the top, 2x2 along the top to join them. And that can be the sun deck, like I say, the carpet, and then go over that and on the floor, because it's looking grim in here. But I think the jet wash will get most of that off. If not, it's a lot more bloody sanding. Well, it will be because that brick's painted it and done a sh yeah, not a very good job. Shit job. Shit job of painting. That's why the paint turned fucking yellow. Whatever it is. Uh, fucking still flaking. Oh, that is like shit. Oh, I don't know. Some people shouldn't be letting near a fucking boat, let alone a paintbrush. Or a paintbrush, let alone a boat. There we go. So, yeah, got my work cut out yet. But hopefully there's, um, yeah. But obviously I do this for YouTube as well. But if there's anyone on the Dory page on Facebook, I need to get the um, the loop and re-drill this back out. I feel like it could be with epoxy to seal it all up. Um, because this boat didn't come with it. Under here. I think they tried picking it up by the um, cleat as well as two hooks at the back when they tried hoisting it in the air and it tore it backwards um, there was a, you could well obviously there was no cleat there but you could see the dent so I filled that already with epoxy and it was it sort of basically taped it over there and that was to stop it all leaking out but it did it run all down here but that was alright just sanded off so I need one of them. Um, the main thing I need to know is what's the thickness of the bolt? Now I've seen some that are M20s, M18s, 16s, M10s. But I'd love to know what the genuine original size is. I've got a feeling it's an M16. Um, you know what? Let's turn it up the right way. Um, yeah, I've got a feeling it's an M16. 
and I can roughly see where the hole was, I think. Mm -hmm. No. Um, so the game plan is to drill that straight back through again, get the correct nut and bolt. And then on the other side, I'm thinking I might get a bow bow roller for an anchor and then use the bolt to hold that on. Put like a little um, chrome cap nut over the top of the thread, cut the thread to the right depth, um, tidy that up. Other than that, we're pretty much finished. All right, I'm going to go in and have my dinner. Is that mahogany? Look around here, you can see no shine, no shine, no shine. And then this is where I'm, that's actually polished on there now. So I'm doing the same process as the boat, although I haven't flatted this with 1200, which I probably should. Probably should do that. I've done it with 500. But then um, what I'm doing then is the same old thing is chuck the polish on and buff it up. So you just try and polish up the varnish that I've sanded. Anyway, so I don't ruin it with one end. I'll, uh, I'll show you the finished results later when it's done. She's shouting at me to go and eat my dinner, but I want to get this finished before it gets too dark. So dinner will have to wait. Alright, uh, the video I originally did of this outside is corrupted. So I'll have to do a quick another one. Uh, well, you'll see that. This is uh, venturing on from after we started polishing it. I've left my torch outside, so I've got to have a you'll see. But there you go, it's come up pretty much as shiny as a car would come up. A couple of little spots, blemishes in places, but that's where the lacquer sat into the, the deeper cracks. But uh, that, it's in grain. Gorgeous. So that is a fully restored bench seat. And it's lovely. There you go, so that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you want to like and subscribe, do that as well. I don't mind. Thank you. Bye.